Hey everyone, it's Emily from Life So Savory and today we're going to make a really cute ruffled skirt for Rose. It's warming up around here and it's definitely time to think about sewing more summer clothes. Plus, I just went through her drawers this weekend and got rid of a bunch of things that she had outgrown. So now it's time to plug the holes and figure out what does she need for summer and especially some warmer things as we finish the school year. So this ruffle skirt is adorable, some easy to make. It has shorts attached underneath, which are awesome for playing around and um, just being active. And so you're going to love it. So today we're going to make some ruffled shorts and the link to the tutorial, as well as the free shorts pattern that I'm going to be using is included in the description of this video. So you can check that out there and we're going to get started. So let me show you what I have cut out already uh, for this project. And then from there, we'll get sewing. So I have made cut out two of the shorts. This is using the free shorties pattern. And um, I didn't really make any edits to it except for that I lowered the top of it. Okay, the waist is lower because we're going to add a waistband. And I've cut this waistband about four inches um, wide. And the length is the same as the top of the shorts. Then I've also cut a piece of one and a half inch elastic, which makes a really cute, a little bit wider waistband on these shorts. So these will be the shorts, but attached to the shorts, we're going to have the cutest ruffle skirt. And if you can't wait till the end to see what it looks like, you can click the link in the description of this video to check out what we're making and the final result that's coming. So the first thing I did is cut the basic skirt shape. Okay. I see um, a few people, Debbie and Emily and someone who's having a terrible thunderstorm. Um, yeah, it's actually a beautiful day here. It's sunny and warmish, and so I can't complain. Um, so for these skirt pieces, again, this is all detailed, very, it's all included in very specific detail in the tutorial, so you can check it out. But the skirt pieces, the top is cut just a tiny bit wider than the top of the built-in shorts. So this is going to be pretty fitted at the waist. And then it is flared out. Um two to three inches on each side to accommodate for the hips and the butt. Then the length of this, you want to make sure it completely covers the backside. There's, it's going to be longer than this because we're going to sew a ruffle on the bottom, but this is just to get us started with the base of the skirt. Then we're going to have another ruffle. Okay. So we have this, we have a bottom of skirt ruffle. So I've cut this five and a half inches wide and I've cut two pieces because I actually want it to be pretty roughly. So I'm going to sew these two pieces together, okay, make it roughly on the bottom. And then we're going to have another ruffle in the middle. So here's the top. This ruffle will be sewn here. And then the bottom ruffle will be there and it'll be two layers of ruffles, okay? So that's what it's going to look like. We have a um, few things we can get started sewing and then we're going to put it together. So let me know if you have any questions along the way and we'll get to it. All right. Yes. Looks like we have, um, oh, you got to go see the eclipse. That's super fun. It was not great here in Colorado. I went out and looked at it and it, we weren't, um, near totality. So it actually wasn't that impressive and I didn't even have special glasses. So I felt like, eh. I maybe needed that to be able to, to see better. All right. So we're going to start by sewing a little bit of the shorts together and the skirt base together on the sides. So before I go over to the serger, which is where I will start, I'm gonna take these pieces and lay them right sides together. So I'm putting, it's a kind of a trapezoid wedge shape and we're gonna sew the two angled sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin those. I know this is a ruffle, ruffle, ruffle skirt. It's also pretty twirly. And both those things are things Rose loves. This one is super cute. It looks very fun and casual, just with like a t-shirt, paired with a t-shirt. Um, but it's also perfect for school because it has the shorts built in underneath. So you can still like 
play on the playground and sit on the ground. And um, the version that you see in the photos, I sewed two years ago and it finally just got a little too short and a little too tight on her waist. So we gave it away and now I'm making her a new one. All right, so here's the wedge. It's gonna be the base of our skirt we're gonna build off of. Here's the shorts and we're gonna sew the two um, crop seams of that. So let me go ahead and turn this towards the serger. All right, so we're gonna begin by sewing on here. And we're gonna sew, like I said, the sides of this skirt. Let me just make sure. Last week I was doing some other things on the serger, so I just wanna make sure that I have the settings all back to normal. Okay, so there's one side of the skirt and now we'll do the other side. Keep those raw edges lined up. I will say that because I'm using knit fabric that does not fray, I am not going to hem any of the ruffles. So they're just gonna be raw edge ruffles for both the mid level ruffle and the bottom ruffle. Okay, so we're just gonna leave um, as well as this bottom of the skirt, although we will sew this one to the bottom ruffle. So there's that part of the skirt. We're gonna set that aside. Then I'm going to place the um, shorts right sides together. Okay, and we're gonna sew the front and back curved crotch seam. Then I'm gonna actually hem these because I like to hem it on my cover stitch when it's a flat, open piece. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So this shorts pattern can be used to sew under shorts like I'm sewing right now. It can also be used to just show, sew freestanding, um, sort of biker short looks to be worn under other skirts or dresses or with t-shirts. They are so cute and easy. And if you get them all cut out and once you start sewing, you can literally sew probably like five or six of these in an hour. They are very, very quick. So I um, do love to use this pattern because it's so fast and I feel like I can really crank it out. All right, so I am... Um, these needle threads seem twisted here. So I'm just gonna unthread them. We're gonna give a fresh cut. And then we're gonna thread. Oh, it's going through my point. All right, so I'm gonna pull it out up here and re-thread left and right. So this is a double cover stitch. It can do loopers on the top and the bottom. Right now, we're just going for a simple hem on the way. So I'm going to do two needles, not three, with a looper on the bottom. And last time I threaded this, I was thinking, wow, it's like, did the holes in the needles get smaller? Did my thread get fatter? Or are my eyes getting worse? I probably know what the answer is, <laughs> unfortunately, to that question. I do think one of these threads is like slightly, slightly a heavier weight though. I don't know, pull it out of my drawer. Okay, so now I have the needles freshly threaded. I'm just gonna grab a scrap of fabric out of the garbage here to just do a quick test run. Oh, 
Okay, so we can see it's looking good. There's the front uh, two needles. It's a little bit in the groove. But you can see the back, the chain stitch on the back makes it stretchy and perfect for hands. So on these shorts, I have two leg openings and right now they're open and flat. So I actually really love hemming these while I can just zip down a straight line, start and stop at the beginning, not have to hem it in a circle. So I'm folding back to the wrong side of the fabric, sewing on the front right side of this fabric, and just gonna sew this hem real quickly on the bottoms of these legs. Of course you can sew in a circle, but something like leggings where the circle isn't very big. It's not like the bottom of a t-shirt where, you know, it's big and easy. This sometimes gets a little crowded. So we have an easy, quick little hem, the bottom of the pants with the stretch on the back. So I prefer if I can, especially uh, even on long leggings because those ankles are really not a very big opening. It can be quite tight to sew around a little ankle opening. I prefer to sew it like this before it's in a circle. If you don't have a cover stitch, you can of course hem these leggings with a zigzag stitch or a knit stitch on your sewing machine. You could also use um, a twin needle on your sewing machine. There are many, many ways to you to hem stretch fabric even without any sort of special machine. So the only drawback to sewing, like I did, sewing that first is now we will have two serger seams that will need to be finished on the outside of each leg because I'm sewing off here and I can't just cut that or that will fray. Okay, so I have these two sort of raw serger seams that we need to finish. So I like to grab my handy little darning needle and we'll go ahead and just thread those back through and then they'll be completely finished. Let's see if it will focus on my needle. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna, st I stick the needle in, then I'm going to thread the needle. If there's any knots or anything on that serger, threads, you will need to cut those off because otherwise it will keep it from pulling through like I just did. Then I can cut it because an inch of it is now threaded through my seam. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I can get it stuck through. and pull that all the way through, okay? So then we can turn these right side out and see we have the start of the shorts that will be built in. The back of the shorts are higher than the front and that's how at this point I can tell back from front. You can always label that if you want, okay? All right, let me see. <laughs> yeah, I just saw your comment about the holes getting smaller and the thread getting fatter. Yes, why is that the case? Okay, so I'm going to grab over here my, I've got two ruffles. The bottom ruffle is where we're going to start. And because I'm piecing two pieces together to get a more gathered ruffle, I'm going to start by piecing those together. All right, so we'll sew the short edge here. All right, because one of these, and I don't know which side yet, so I won't do it, one of these will actually be the bottom of the skirt and will be a raw edge. So we will end up threading one of those serger's um, tails back through the seam. And then I'm going to sew the other edge together. So we actually have a big gathered circle. 
Um, actually, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do that because I want to gather on my sewing machine or on my serger, and it's easier to adjust the ruffles if um, it's easier to adjust the ruffles if it's open ended. So I'm going to do it. Okay. So because I want these to be able to be adjusted, I'm going to go ahead and chain off a several inch um, thread chain to start. Okay. Then I'm going to change my differential feed to two, my stitch length to four, and I'm going to tighten my needles to about five and a half. And this is going to give us a nice tight gather. So very simple, couple small little adjustments. And I have this chain here so that should I need to make my ruffles longer, I have needle threads to move it out on. Okay, because otherwise you're just literally sliding your fabric off the thread. So this is going to buy me a little bit more if I need to make the the, if I gather them too much, but um, I have a lot of fabric here, so I don't think that's going to be the case, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. All right, so let's go ahead and this is going to gather the top of the ruffle. And make a really cute, evenly gathered ruffle. I do have a lot of fabric here, so I might in the end end up just um, seeing how it looks and trimming any extra fabric, but we'll cross whatever bridge we need to when we're finished gathering. So I'm going to sew all the way. Again, this bottom ruffle I cut five and a half inches tall and the other ruffle I cut six inches tall but you can definitely adjust those as you want this is really gathered so we'll see how it fits on the bottom I might need to let some gathers out if you don't want it as gathered then that's when you can go ahead and loosen the needles back to four I usually do it between four and six. The needles on six is going to get you a tighter gather because it's cinching up those needles. The four is going to get you a looser gather um, because it's just sewing at a normal tension on the needles. All right, again, I'm going to chain off quite a few inches here so that I've got some threads to play with. Okay, we're going to cut that. We're going to head back to the sewing table so we can check out the rest of the project. I didn't set up my second camera today. Maybe I should have. So I have to adjust as I go back and forth between um, the two. Okay. And I've cut my head off. I don't know. You probably don't really need to see me. You can just see what I'm sewing, but... Maybe you will see me. Okay. I'm mostly in the frame. I'll lean over. All right. So the first thing we need to do on this. So you will notice if I hang this up, see how those corners hang down lower because I just cut a wedge. Okay. I didn't curve it. So you actually have these sort of droopy corners. So the first thing I'm going to do is fix that by gently rounding about an inch off the corner. And now you'll see when it hangs, it actually hangs straight across. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other corner, gently round it. This is detailed in the written tutorial. So if you're thinking like, what is she doing? I can't really see. I've got pictures and show you how to cut off these little corners. But now when this is hanging, it's gonna hang nice and straight. And when we put the ruffle on the bottom, the ruffle will also hang nice and straight. Okay? Yay. All right. Um, so we have the bottom of this. This is what we're trying to match our ruffle to. And we have this fabric that we just ruffled. This is the one not ruffled. So I need it to be, if I put it into a circle, 
I need it to be the dimension of the bottom of this skirt. And it is pretty close, but I actually did ruffle it a little bit too much. So you can see over here, I've got some unaccounted for um, bottom of the skirt. Okay, so we got to loosen this ruffle up. It's very, very ruffled, as you can see. But we did leave extra thread. So here's what we can do. We can simply just slide the ruffles along. It's crazy. It's just like when you're gathering using sort of the traditional method on the sewing machine, use those needle threads as sort of the guide to slide the ruffles and make them less gathered by opening them up a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and slide that end. I'm gonna slide a few inches off this end, then I'll remeasure and then we'll adjust the middle. So, so far the gathers on the middle are much more gathered than the outside. But once we get this to be the right length, then we'll fix that part. But we're close, we're real close. Okay, so I'm gonna try to slide a little bit more from the middle, sort of even the gathers as I'm going, okay. Slide those off. Alternately, if it's not tight enough, you can grab a hold of the needle threads and cinch them just like you do. Ah, okay, it's a good, we did it. It's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and quickly sew up the side of this ruffle so that it, um, well, maybe I'll tie these threads together first um, so it won't keep ungathering or regathering. Okay, stop the gathers. So we're gonna sew that securely. We'll have a circular ruffle and then we can go ahead and pin it on the bottom of the skirt, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just sew this. And of course, um, I'm not gonna slide the camera over because it's kind of a couple things to adjust today. So I'm gonna narrate that I'm gonna go over here to the serger and real quickly just sew down. Oh, and of course put my adjustments back because now I don't wanna gather anymore. I just want to sew straight down the end of this ruffle and complete the circle of this ruffle. All right, so we're just going to sew it right down. Okay, so a couple of things. One, we're going to finish the raw edge of the bottom of this ruffle because we don't want to um, have that come undone, okay? And then I'm going to turn this right side out and take just a minute and make sure the ruffles are as evenly spread out as they can be, okay? So if I see any sort of clumps still or it's still I think it's really nice and ruffled and how cute is that for the bottom of the skirt I just want to make sure it's pretty even okay so now I'm going to turn it back right sides in and we're going to take this skirt and we're going to turn it right side out and we're going to clip the bottom of this skirt to right here the top of this ruffle Okay, so I'm gonna just work my way around. It should line up pretty evenly because we I measured it when it was laid out. The skirt right now does not have a front and a back. It has side seams and either one can be the front and either one can be the back. We haven't designated that yet, okay? So that's kind of a coming in the future as we put the shorts and pieces together that we would have a front and a back. So depending on your ruffle, I find like sometimes I'm like, oh, that side of the ruffle, I really don't like it. I like this side of the ruffle better. So that's how, if you want to determine a front or back, if you have like any weirdness on your ruffle or piece that you part you don't like as much, you can go ahead and designate that to be the back. But at this point, we don't have a front or a back lined up. 
Okay. So pinning or clipping the bottom of the skirt to the top of the very bottom ruffle. If there's any difference, you're easing it in. Okay. So now we have that clipped and we're going to go ahead and sew it. I will turn and show because we're going to, we have a couple pieces of sewing here now before we come back to the pinning. Okay. So back to the serger. All right, so you can sew with the ruffles up or the ruffles down. I prefer to sew with the ruffles up so I can see and make sure they're all laying flat. Again, I've put my machine back, completely back to its original settings. So we're not gathering, we're simply sewing this straight. If you feel like this seam needs more stabilization, you could go ahead and put some clear elastic into this to help stabilize it. I am not, so we'll see if that was that is a good decision or not. When we we'll see when we flip it right side out if I like if I feel that the seam is stabilized enough. Sometimes it's hard to know. I'm trying to sew not a huge seam allowance, but enough of a seam allowance to cover the um, gathering stitches so I don't have to pick those out. I don't really care to have to pick those. So I can go ahead and sew just a little bit lower than the gathering stitches, then they're all covered up. You could also stitch this on your sewing machine. Remember all of this could be sewed on your sewing machine rather than the serger. But just make sure, like for the hem and all of the pieces that will be stretchy, that you use a knit stitch, a zigzag, or something that has stretch because this entire project is made with knit fabric and it needs to be able to stretch and move with the body movement. And if it doesn't, you're going to pop seams and end up ruining all your hard work. So don't. Don't do that. I, <laughs> I think I was pregnant with my oldest. I knew how to sew. I definitely didn't sew as much like clothes and things as I do now. But I was helping a friend make a baby blanket for her baby that she was pregnant with. And I like showed her how to do a couple things and then I just let her sew on her own. Well, anyway, she never backstitched the whole project. And so a couple days later, she came back and she's like, um, some of these pieces are falling apart. So we had to go back and talk about backstitching and um, fix, fix the parts of the blank that were falling apart. So you don't want to have to remake this twice. So make sure you're getting it all securely sewn in. And now... Oh my goodness, it's so cute. It's so cute just like this. You could put the waistband on and have it be a skirt right like this. How adorable is that? Okay, so we have to finish this serger tail here on the bottom of the ruffle, but otherwise this first step is looking so cute and amazing. All right, so we're gonna create the second ruffle. Now this one is not going to be nearly as ruffled as the first one. We're still going to keep it open to be measured. It's also going to go on a smaller part of the skirt. So I'm going to try gathering with the serger. I'm going to put my differential feed to two, stitch length to two, but I'm going to leave it just on four for the needles. So we're hoping that it will be not gathered as tightly. Okay, I'm still going to take a nice chain off so that if we need to adjust, we can. And we're going to hope this is a, it will be not as tight of a gather. But this is pretty thin fabric, so it gathers actually really nicely. The thinner the fabric, the nicer and easier it's going to gather. And I just love using this method. 
we're gathering most fabrics. So I, if you don't need to be super precise, which I'm just making ruffles, this is such an easy method. And you can adjust it. You just can't adjust like two feet. Okay, you need to be working with like inches of adjustment here on your size. Okay, so again, I'm gonna chain off several inches so that I have that to go from. And here we have this, it definitely is too short, but let's go over and see how much too short so we can fix it. Okay, so now we are going to sew this second layer of skirt or ruffle onto the skirt above the first layer, but so that it overhangs. And I'm gonna have to loosen this up, but I just wanna show you the general idea, okay? So probably even a little bit more, maybe like an inch of overhang from the first ruffle to the second ruffle. Oh my goodness, the skirt is gonna be so, so cute. And then there's a bit of fabric above that's not ruffled and then the waistband will go on top, okay? So that's what we're doing. Now I am wondering in this, if I do wanna actually cut more ruffle because I'm about, let's see, we're wrapping this around this part of the skirt. I'm about six inches short and I'm afraid if I pull that much out of the ruffle that it's really not gonna be ruffled enough because this isn't like, I feel like this isn't too ruffled. I feel like it's like the perfect amount of ruffles on there. Would you agree? Okay, so I'm gonna, I have some scraps of this fabric, uh, but honestly, I think I'm just gonna cut it there and we'll put a pot, pause on this, a pin in it, and we'll pick up next week and I'll just create a part two of this project while I sort of figure out how to get more fabric. I am using scraps for both of these colors, but I think I have a little bit left. So I'll try to cut some fabric, gather it up and we'll put it in here and that will be the back because it will have a couple seams in it. Um, and that will be the back of the skirt. Okay, so we're gonna put a little pause on this. I hope I've enticed you enough to come back and finish the rest of this project with me next Wednesday. It'll be on Life So Savory Facebook and YouTube at 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm sorry, 1 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time or 3 p.m. Eastern. So you can join me then and we'll finish it up. If not, you can always catch the replay on both those locations as well. And we'll finish this up. So again, I'm going to give you one last look of how cute it's looking. Unruffled at the top, two layers of ruffles. It's going to be fun. Rose is going to love this, but I want to make sure I do it right. Okay, so we're going to dig up some more ruffles and we'll see you next week. All right, see you then. Bye.